What's up, my people? All right, so today I want to have I have a very special video for you guys. Basically, I'm I was working, I was breeding my corn snakes together, and then I said, you know what? I think I think it's the perfect time that I'm going to showcase to you guys what we actually do during the breeding season. So we're still at the beginning of the breeding season, but uh, we still have like a long way to go. We don't we haven't even had eggs yet, but we started putting males with the females for it's been a few weeks, and now everything is copulating. Like our corn snakes are on fire, snakes are ovulating, and it's looking really, really, really promising for this 2021 season. So we're gonna show, I'm gonna showcase to you guys like a little bit of what we do, and we're gonna go around, like I explained in our intro video, that it's gonna be very raw footage. Um, you guys are just gonna follow me and then I'm gonna I'm still gonna be working because you know like I love you guys but I still have a lot of work to do and this is the, the reality of our business is that this is time consuming it's like seven days a week and we're gonna get into more and more work as we go through the the, the baby season right and then this is springtime so everything is just starting so I mean right now this morning I came in and one of the first things that I did is I put all my male corn snakes with my females. Now I have one male for every two females. I don't do more and the main reason is because I don't do everything myself so it's much easier to organize everything when it's very set. So we do our pairings as we go and then case by case if there's anything that we need to change then we change males. We have free males that we can interchange and add uh, if ever there's no breedings or some males are lazy or some females are not as receptive as others. But I have some really, really amazing projects. So I'll make sure that you just stay tuned with us and I'm gonna showcase to you. But before that, make sure to subscribe. If you wanna see some awesome animals, like I'm gonna show you right now, make sure you subscribe, like, like this video, and comment and let us know what else that you guys wanna see. So one of the pairing that we have is one of my favorite uh, snakes in the collection. They're candy cane sun-kissed corn snakes. I mean, the contrast on these animals is, is insane. We're gonna be producing them together. They're head for butter, so we might produce some butter, candy cane, sun kisses. And I mean, these animals were produced by Walter Creations, and I saw them at a show uh, a few years ago in Tinley, and it's rare that people convince me to be able to just buy animals on site. I'm not an impulsive buyer, but I, I saw those animals, I was like, okay, I need them. And like, especially when he told me, he's like, oh yeah, these are the ugly ones that I produce. I was just amazed and I said, you know what? I can't believe of what I would be able to produce uh, with those animals. So I'm really, really excited with those. Now, one of the ones that I have is, this is my son's project and it's my son's favorite snake. So this is my palmetto. The contrast is insane here. <laughs> it's a little bit crazy. That works. So we're breeding a salmon snow head palmetto with a palmetto. So my main goal with this breed, with this breeding is eventually is to produce a salmon snow palmetto. So you can see the freckles on the palmetto is like uh, from black to red to, to grayish color. But I'm thinking of a white snake with pink speckles. This is my goal. I'm really, really hyped up with those. I mean, I think it's gonna be a few generations, but we're gonna get there eventually. And I mean, it's just gonna be amazing. So we produce, we did make babies out of those last year and we're, the success was so great that we're doing it again this year. So it's really, really cool. That's one of them right here. Yeah, look at them. Good girl. So they've already had a few copulations already so far. And the salmon snow is what? It's a line of albino? So the salmon snow is definitely, it's a line of the snows. I mean, uh, it, it was bred to be able to be like, to, to be pink. So I mean, uh, I'm not 100% sure exactly which lineage that we have because there's a few of, of them out there, but uh, but we work with so many different things. Sometimes it'll pop back up, but right now in my mind, I'm not sure. <laughs> then uh, one of these projects here, these are my normal corn snakes. Now they're normal, they look normal, but they're not so normal. So these guys are head quad. So they're head for four different recessive. We're talking about scaleless, sun-kissed, diffused, and the other one is caramel. Yes, so I mean, these four genes, there's just so much, sometimes we don't even know what we have. So what, 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 what could you make there? So we're talking about scaleless caramel, diffused, sun-kissed. Now wow. the caramel sun -kissed is what they call the honey. So we're talking about like a scaleless, diffused honey. Which oh, that's is, cool. It's incredible. I mean, especially with the scaleless, 
there, it's never been done. So there's a lot of these combinations that has never been done. So we have like four pairs that we're working to be able to hit that quad. So pray for us and let us know. Coming down guys, what's the math of this? Four pairs, what are the odds? So what are our chances? My math is so not good that I honestly don't know, but make sure you comment below so you let me know. So you teach me how many, what, what are my odds on that? My odds I, are, I'm thinking I'm pretty good because of how many pairs I have, but- uh, How many eggs do? We're gonna see how many eggs that we, that we need, but I mean, we're gonna get there. I'm thinking I could be able to produce about like 80 eggs. So am I gonna hit one this year? That's the question. So let's pray for it. Now, the last pair I'm gonna show you is stuff that I've produced. It's just simply, when it comes to contrast, this is the one, right? So we're talking about an extreme reverse OKT corn snake with a Tessera OKT corn snake. Now these come from breedings that we've made in the past that are from the Abbott line. So you can see the Abbott line with the, with the very, very dark uh, black, so the Abbott increased the contrast on the Tessera scale. Black, exactly. Yeah. So the contrast and the black markings is just simply amazing. And I mean, it's the same thing when it goes to the reverse. So you have like final. both extreme animals. So that's insane. Yeah. Some people, sometimes I show, I showcase that animal and I let them know, I'm like, this is an albino boa. And they're like, what? I mean, yeah, it almost looks like an albino boa. Like the pattern and the coloration on them is just simply mesmerizing. It's, it's just crazy. I look at them and I'm like, I can look at them all day. <laughs> so now we're gonna go to the to the king snake room and I'm gonna start pairing some more stuff. At the same time, I'll show you like a few of the kings that we have that are pairing that are really, really excited. So in the king snake room, so we have king snakes, rat snakes, and a few milk snakes also behind me. So we don't have as many as the corns, but we have a great selection of them. So we have like a few, a few animals that are very, normal looking so this is like a splendida so a desert king snake now these are very very basic morphs and some of the stuff that you find in pet stores and everywhere around but i mean they're just simply beautiful and simply stunning look at that yeah it's perfect so now you'll see that when we breed we use color codes so we put like co color stickers a little bit everywhere that we do and the main thing is just to let us know where we're putting males and where we're putting uh, which ones are breeding, which ones are not breeding. Sometimes you'll see like col color codes like these red ones are basically because we're not breeding them this year, so they're skipping. Or special notes to all the different staff that we have. We put all these different codes. Once we reach to the <clears throat> once we reach basically a little bit further down, we have we have color codes that sit, that let us know when the snakes shed, and they're expecting, they we're expecting them for them to to lay, or some that are actually about to work. I mean, why use color codes? It's a little bit crazy. This one, blizzard number one. So it's a little bit crazy, but you know what? Our minds are going crazy. At this time of year, we have so many things that we can do. Sometimes we walk into the facility and we're like, okay, what do I have to do today? Well, you know what? There's just so many things that we have to do. It's like, we can't get that list done. So we come into a room and we know what we have to do by coming into here, because we know that those color codes tell us, okay, we got to breed our animals. We got to make sure that these ones have to be fed a little bit extra and to go on top of our normal, work so basically when you have that many animals you just need to have visual cues that reminds you quickly what you have to do and which male goes in each bins and that's exactly right that's it so i mean it really helps us helps us out and uh, we, it, it makes everything really really much like much easier much much easier these are the cool ones you can see here this one is a little bit cool so those are things that i look when i go into so this this annery florida king is very inflated so we're talking about this snake is in the process of ovulating right now so i'm putting the male in just as precautionary but their odds are is that they've already had their calculations and they're pretty much done. So eventually we're gonna put a sticker on her probably by next week, a blue sticker that's gonna tell us that she's gonna go into shed. So what she sheds, you don't see you don't see any blue stickers right now, but soon enough, oh actually we have we have some blue stickers. So the first clutches are coming. 
And our first clutches are always the Mexican Black Kings for us. So a lot of people, they're super interested in those as well. I mean, the Mexican Black Kings, it's probably the most sought out king snake that's out there right now. And I mean, they, honestly, they're just simply beautiful. So I mean, the demand on them is insane. I mean, there's, it's crazy because with those snakes, um, <clears throat> the Mexican Black Kings, we remember, like we've been breeding them for, since the early 1990s. So my dad used to breed them when I was just a kid. And we were selling them for $20, $20. Right now they sell for around like 500 Canadian. So like we're talking about like 350 US dollars for some of them. It's insane when you think about it, that you have a project that just basically increases in value like that but I mean that's just how it is I and mean, sometimes you just got to keep uh, keep working with animals that you actually find beautiful you know what's this that's beautiful so this is a red blotched king snake so we work with those on hoping to make them more red and more red and more red and they're very beautiful but they have a hell of an attitude Especially and, in feeding time. Yeah, when it comes to feeding season, to feeding time they just jump up. One of my favorite one that I have is like this one here. So that's a straight Lodge King. Oh, wow. And it just looks very different. It looks, for me, it reminds me like of a... Every single scales all have the tip of them are black and the base is yellow. It's really nice. So now I'm talking with you guys and I'm putting snakes on the wrong, on the wrong bins. But it's all right. We figured it all up, right? So those we did one wall right now, and then we're gonna do a few a few milk snakes. So the milk snakes are really really cool because we have like some splotch some splotch Nelsons with some T positive albinos. Oh, wait, wait, show me this female. This female is mind blowing. Look at that. That's beautiful. So we we did this we did this pairing last year. We have some albino Nelsons. And we do this one right here. Let's go right here. And another one. And I mean, <clears throat> so we do this, we breed the animals um, every five days. So we try to make sure that the females breed with the males every five days. Once there's populations, we gotta make sure that we don't skip any of those days because it's very, very crucial time sometimes. So I mean, we try to try to do this on a regular basis and then on top of that it seems very simple and straightforward but you gotta you gotta put up the fact that we're also feeding these animals heavily during the same time right and I mean that's the hard part because you don't want to put a male with a female right after they, they fed. Because sometimes their, their mind is on digesting and it's not on breeding. So you have to wait a few days. You have to make sure that your feeder, that the, what you feed is not too big so that they're not spending too much time like during the digestive period, you know? So it's, it's a very tricky point, but I, the, the big trick is the more time you spend with your animals, the more success you will have. And it's a big coordination thing because when you have employees too, you need to be, you know, really clear and have a good plan of like during all your week, what's what's to be done because you don't want to, you know, an employee feeds the day before you, you want to you know, prepare your animals. You know? So it's for sure. It's, it's definitely different than if you're if you're alone and those are your own animals and that you're not doing it from home and you don't need to worry about getting to your facility and doing what, what you need to do. But I mean, <clears throat> these are like the sacrifices that we do because what we do is we're so lucky to be able to do that. So I mean, we put in the work. And it's, it's a, at this time of year, it's seven days a week. It's every day that we're doing something. And I mean, what we work now is gonna pay off in a few weeks when we start getting eggs. And then in a few months, we start getting babies. And then from that point on, then it's not about, it's not about work after when you get babies, it's insanity. Like we we're talking about like thousands of babies that hatch out at the same time. And you gotta feed all those animals. Eventually your rodent productivity becomes none like non efficient because you have too many so you're struggling around all the different breeders to be able to do that but to find what you need but at the same time 
you already there's everybody else also that is, that is competing in that same in that same thing. So it's a, it it can be a struggle, but we always pull that's through, cool. and it's good. And that's one of the reasons why we have our own rodent breeding facility. What's that variable? So king? this is variable king snake, and those are really cool because we have a we have a few of those pairings that they, they vary so much when you have babies. So we have some of the variety that they produce is like a full out black. King snakes, which is actually really, really cool. <clears throat> and I mean, it's it, it's simply so much fun. And I mean, I do this on a weekly basis, and then every time that I, that I do it, I just we just love it. You know, it's it's such a privilege for us to be able to work with those animals and to do what we do. And I mean, there's nothing better than to than this time of of year to be able to produce those animals. One of the things that's really, really fun, I mean, one of the things that's really, really fun is that we have, um, uh, <clears throat> so this is gonna be a little bit tricky. We have people that walk into our facility all the time, which is really cool, but uh, it can definitely come into hand because we have we have one of our friends right now that came in bringing some snakes for some of the shipping services that we do. So these are little things that we deal with all the time. So. You guys gonna have to bear with us until. We'll but it's do. raw. But it is raw. Exactly. This is what we. This is what it is. We get disturbed. We like. I'm pretty lucky because right now I, I put my phone on vibrating, but it's been vibrating like ten times since <laughs> we've been doing this video, which is actually pretty cool. It's really hard to have a real conversation with Brian when we're at work because like it's, it's ringing all the time. But I mean, we're almost done. We're like, we're more than two thirds done, and we're going through all this thing. But I mean, we're having we're having a lot of fun. Um, it's really really cool. These are awesome. These are chocolate cow kings with a blizzard cow kings. These are just simply stunning California. That's creatures. just a real Oreo right there, black and white. Yeah, these ones, white, pink, yellow. They're just simply beautiful. This. We have a few. These are typical 50 50 Cal Kings. Simple, beautiful, just like we like them. Over here, and these albinos. And then that's where we reach. So we're reaching the Mexican Black Kings. So we have some blue stickers because some of our females are actually gravid. You can see right now that they are swollen up right in the back here. You can see the scales are really, really spread. And then from that point on, the animals are what we call in blue. So they're going through shed. Once they shed, we're gonna add a laying bin with moss and seven to 10 days and we have eggs. So we're pretty much done. We have like a few more right now. But thanks for being with me, for sharing these moments with us. And I, I love to be able to shape, showcase with you guys what we do. You know? I mean, <clears throat> right now you're just part of it, seeing the raw footage of us breeding our animals. And this is just the process of what we do on a daily basis, which is just simply, um, simply fun. I mean, we love what we do. We enjoy doing these things and it can get crazy. It gets really, really crazy sometimes, but we're so lucky to be doing that. And I mean, soon enough, you'll see all the babies. It's going to be videos of the babies just like... Or it's going to be nuts. You know, it's just going to be babies coming out of eggs everywhere. And we're going to have a lot of fun doing that. So, I mean, thanks so much for being with us. Um, if you like this type of video of just following what we do on a daily basis, uh, weekly or monthly basis, I mean, Make sure to subscribe, make sure to like this video and comment what else you would like to see. What else you'd like for me to be able to do to showcase you or if you want to learn about certain specific things, shoot us a comment, let us know what it is that you want. And this was fun, this was fun. And until next time, and again, no stress.